Hello everyone, welcome back to part three this time of my Joust Restore. You know, the one thing I'm learning is these restores always seem to take longer than expected. I didn't want this to be a three-part video. I figured it would have been done in two parts, but nope, it's spilled over into three. But this will definitely be the last part because there's kind of only two things left. I just got to rebuild the control panel. Um, I actually got the uh, control panel overlay, so I'm ready to rebuild that and, you know, get the joysticks working all nice and smooth again, making it look good. And stenciling is the last. That's the big one, uh, which should be coming in soon. Those are the last two things pretty much to cover and the machine is done. So let's hop on down to the garage and get down to it. So the control panel overlay finally arrived. So the next step, uh, since I'm going to be still waiting on the stencil stuff for a few days, is to rebuild this guy. Uh, let me get this out of the way for a second here. Here's the control panel overlay. Now these of course come in a tube, uh, so they're kind of curled up. So I laid it flat with some weight on it to help straighten it out a little bit. No, so it's, it's pretty good now. This is from, uh, where did I get this from? from? Well, Game On Graphics, uh, it was 35 bucks. Doesn't have the holes cut out, you know, for the buns and stuff. That's a little annoying to me. I kind of wish they would do that, and then it'll be all machined. But eh, whatever. When I put it through the back, I'll use an exacto knife and cut them out. Most of the holes don't have to be real accurate anyway, like for the buttons, because the button has a little part that covers it. So if I don't cut it correctly, that's no big deal. But for the joysticks, that's going to show. So I'm going to have to be real accurate on those. But I'll just go from the back, so that be sure, should be okay. So this is 35 bucks, but I'm gonna put this away. I don't need it for the moment. Because first I gotta actually rebuild, rebuild this guy. And I did get some parts for that. So I'll show you where I got them from. Some various parts and things. So each of these is a joystick rebuild kit. I could have probably kept the right side joystick. It wasn't too bad. The left side is shot. The right side wasn't too bad, but I'm like, let me just change them both since I'm doing it. So each of these were 30, let me send this to it, 35 bucks each for each rebuild kit. Uh, I got these from Arcade Shop, which I tend to get a lot of stuff from there. And I got all new buttons. Uh, the buttons, I mean, these buttons colored are actually wrong on the original panel. You can see there's white over there when it's supposed to be yellow. And that's a dark blue when it's supposed to be a light blue. They're just totally wrong. So uh, I got like here the proper blue, you know, joust blue and joust yellow buttons. And ended up getting two new clear buttons. I mean, those clear buttons may clean up and be reusable, but I'm like, I, this is one of my favorite games. I just want to make it nice and fresh. So I got new, two new buttons there. The joysticks were actually pretty good, so I kept them. I'm going to reuse those. Uh, are the Joust buttons, how much were those? Those are also from Arcade Shop. Let's see here. The translucent buttons were two bucks each, and the other buttons were a dollar each, so really, really cheap. So we'll get these out of the way. I'm going to put these on my bench because I'm not going to need a rebuild kit just yet. Alright. So the first thing is I take this all apart. So I removed it the same way as last time. You know, with the little five bolts that hold it through. And there's all the bolts. And screws and washers and all that kind of stuff. So, let's make this nice and wide here. So the first step is to get this thing down to bare so I can take the control panel overlay off. So, there's a few things to remove. There's this kind of plastic lip thing here I'm going to have to remove and clean. Looks like it's stapled on so I'll restaple it back. I'm going to reuse that. And at the back, this is the hinge that kind of connects it to the cabinet. I got to remove that too. Same idea, five more bolts. No big deal. Uh, and then after that, came back to the front. The buttons all have to be removed. It's the only way to rip off the control panel overlay. And I'll start taking apart these because I'm going to rebuild the joysticks anyway. So I'm going to take those apart. Now let me, let me take these joysticks out once I get the, the joysticks taken apart, after which the overlay should just peel off. So I'm going to get busy on, with that right now. That's my first task, is to get this thing going. I got my uh, Coke Zero, and I got my tools, so I'm going to get busy. All right, everything has been taken apart. So I got things kind of, kind of, sort of organized here. This is kind of the joystick. Um, all the various brackets kind of in the order. I'm trying to keep them like this so I can remember how I actually put them back on. The rebuild kit replaces some of these parts anyway, but that's one of the joysticks there. And that's the other one of the joysticks here. So you can see here it's pretty bare now and on this side. There's LED bulbs only because I had put those prior, but of course they're the typical burnt, burnt out incandescence. So this is all completely bare now. Now I just gotta strip off the control panel overlay and now there's nothing in the way. The remnants of the old joust overlay. That one took a little bit of effort. I ended up having to enlist the help of my heat gun over there, uh, along with, you know, a little razor tool. But it's off. 
zoom out here. It was definitely stuck on there really tight. I'm thinking maybe it was the original overlay, that's why, but partly wood, partly metal, and it was on there real, real tight. But it's off now. Normally I would sand these the surfaces and paint or do other things like that. I actually think I'm going to do nothing to this at all, and the reason is it's a very, maybe partly because I use the heat gun, the whole thing is a nice tacky surface now. It's a perfect place to stick an overlay on. Uh, so I think I'm just going to go right on top. It's not like there's any weird gouges or any craziness. So I think I'm going to do that. Just get the overlay right on top of this. And I have to remember, of course, because the overlay new one has no cutouts. So there's going to be one, two, three, four button holes to cut out and two joystick cutouts right here and here. I'll use an exacto knife for that. So I'm going to get this overlay stuck on here in a minute. Okay, I got the control panel on. The way I ended up doing it, it's always a bit of experimentation depending how the control panel is sized and cut and all that. I wanted to get the flap buttons kind of somewhere in here, so they're in here. On my previous control panel, it was cutting off the word flap. I was hoping to avoid that a little bit, so I lined it so the flap buttons are right about here. Uh, this particular one lines with the red up on top, the red stripe, and it gives it a lot of extra to kind of wrap wrap around over here and uh, let's see on the bottom it looks like that so the red stripe ends up about there I didn't care too much about down here I mostly wanted this area to look good so I wanted the move and these things to be visible at a good spot so I took care of that now I got to reinstall the little angle and this little plastic piece this plastic piece was at the end and it was stapled in I didn't know they sold new ones. It turns out Arcade Shop actually sells this part. And honestly, if I knew, I would have just bought another one rather than try to restore this one because taking out the staples from this was a colossal pain in the ass. But now that this is what I have, I'm going to clean this up, restaple it on. And this one too, I'm going to clean it. I'm actually going to end up painting both to get them both a nice matching uniform black and get these reinstalled onto the control panel. So I painted those other two parts, at least one side of them. They're just outside drying. So in the meantime, I figured I'd start uh, reassembling the control panel. I've cut out holes for the uh, let's see the buttons here, and they used uh, what do I do with it? An exacto knife. You know, it's still the best tool for the job, so I ended up using that. Uh, I didn't care as much on the buttons for accuracy because those are going to be covered up. I tried my best over here and here on the joystick uh, joystick openings because these are going to show. I think they're okay. So now I'm going to get all the buttons installed and the joysticks put back in there. Just about done rebuilding the joysticks. I still have to screw that one in, but I figured before I do that, I'd kind of show the player one side and kind of why it was messed up and how this thing works. This is the old mechanism and you can see there's the new one that's on there. So, I need to get apart here. You can see why with the damage that's been done over time and why this was so wobbly. So, this part kind of sits recessed inside there and then, let's see if we can best explain this. This kind of goes on top. These kind of hook together like so. And what those do is they kind of hold in place this little guy. This is a little, this guy right here. It has a little notch that sits in one hole at the bottom. And there's another hole at the top corresponding on this part here. A little round hole. And what's happened over time, because this joystick, uh, they kind of generate it, but it keeps going back and forth and back and forth in the hole and what's happened is it's literally you can see here it's expanded the hole and that's why that joystick was so wiggly it's literally expanded it kind of a compare the one hole on top you can see what it's supposed to look like that one is a little bit closer to the original this one is just worn out over time and what they did to kind of fix it look at this the metal wore away and they put these little plastic sleeves on it here to try to reduce the wobble. Someone jerry-rigged a little solution on the top and bottom, but that's why this player one joystick was so wobbly. So the rebuild kit comes with all these parts, so you can throw these ones away. I ended up reusing uh, the little uh, leaf switches here, because those are perfectly fine. I didn't need to re-solder and do everything there. So it ends up being just kind of four screws, hold it up against the wood, and then there's another four, two up here, and then two on top that you gotta take apart. It's not too bad, but at least you definitely want to get one of these for your joust. Uh, I mean, cause, whew, wow, that player one takes a lot of beating. But all right, I'm going to button this thing up. So I'm cutting away here. Uh, I was trying to show what happens to these, con you know, control panels on joust over time. The two what happens to the two-way joystick? I couldn't get a very good angle over there, so I figured maybe I'll be able to get a better angle here. But basically, you have this little thingamajiggy here. This thing 
basically here, it rotates left and right, and there's like a leaf switch here, and there's like a leaf switch on the other side. So when you move left and when you move right, that's how it triggers the leaf switches. And it sits inside a little bracket, which when assembled, kind of, sort of, no, oh, anyway, kind of, sort of, looks like this. There's a little, there's a hole on top, and there's a hole on bottom. And this part, with its little two pieces there, sits inside each hole, one on top and one on the bottom. And that's what keeps it. And you know some, well, maybe you don't remember, but on my joust, it was wiggling quite a bit, the joystick, especially on the left side. And the reason is twofold. What happens over time with these brackets is this hole here, the little metal peg that sits inside, over time just kind of widens up the hole. So I'm going to put the two holes from the top and bottom bracket here side by side and believe it or not, let me spin this up a little bit here, there we go. Believe it or not these holes are supposed to be the same size but the, I don't know if you can tell that bottom one is actually enlarged, it's made a little bit wider. Uh, and even the top one has gotten a bit wider, but especially the bottom one on the left and right side, just widened up, so the thing will wiggle in there. And not only that, you can see this is just, it's supposed to be just, let me see if I have the other one. Let's see if I can find the left side, yeah, there we go. I have the right side joystick, which wasn't as bad. This is the right side one, you can see there's the metal peg. The metal pegs are not as bad, but they're still all kind of worn. On this one, the left side, it got worn so badly, the metal little metal pegs wore down so badly, they put, someone did this little hack solution, he put this plastic sleeve on it to try to give it some more life. He did it on both sides, but with this hack and with the holes enlarging more, that was the problem. The joystick literally just started wiggling. So, it was just kind of terrible. So what I ended up doing, of course, is buying that rebuild kit, which replaces these both it supplies both of these brackets, it supplies both of these parts. It also supplies the leaf switches, but I didn't end up using those. So let me go ahead and walk over to the machine. Since I've put the control panel back on, let me get my light on here. There it is, the control panel is on. Now I put the, this is not a new bezel and it's not the new marquee. Those are the old bezel and old marquee. I just put them on there for now while I'm waiting for the parts to arrive. But that is the new control panel which is pretty cool. No more crazy holes in it or anything like that. But the main thing is these joysticks are nice and solid now. I just played a whole game and it plays like much better. Nice and tight. So I'm very happy with that. One thing I'm not too sure about, I did not order it's not too bad of a difference, but I got all new buttons. So there's two red buttons, the yellow button and the blue button. I got those, but I kept the original joysticks. And the yellow joystick matches pretty close. The blue is not exactly a match. I'm wondering if I should have maybe ordered the new joysticks as well since I was at it, but eh, what's done is done. I'll just stick with them. But it's not a perfect match in the blue, but hey, that's okay. But the control panel is done. And I'll tell you, looking at this thing now, it sure is tempting to just put on some out of the yellow or red team molding and call it a day because the game works perfect. I played another full game. Control panel is tight, sound works, controls work, no graphical glitches, uh, scores are saved. Everything is working perfectly. I mean, it's tempting to just put some team molding on, bring it inside and call it a day. But I'm going to face my fears. I definitely fear trying stenciling and I'm going to do it. So I'm going to wait. Stencils should arrive this week. I'll give it a try. I got one try to get the stencils right. If I get it right, great. If I don't and I mess it up, I'll just repaint the sides again, this this brown color, and just leave it at that. But I'm going to give it a try. So since I'm going to do the stenciling, I'm not going to put the T-molding on yet. I'll leave it at like, like that. So I've gotten pretty far with this machine. It's pretty close. It's just stenciling for the most part. And uh, i got to wait for those to arrive. So I'll let the machine sit around for a few days until the stencils arrive. Oh, my new joust bezel came in. So that's kind of cool. I got this one from Arcade Shop, uh, 65 bucks, and it is glass, that's why, of course, it costs a bit more. So what we got here, new one on the left, old one on the right. I mean, right away you can see how much more vibrant the colors are in the new one. You know, and those old ones, over time, it just the colors just always fade. It just kind of is what it is. Uh, but what maybe doesn't come out is how much the paint is flaked on that one. Now, to be fair, this, this one is actually in, in, in reasonably good shape. I mean, I, it's possible I could have kept it. Okay. Like I had mentioned earlier, I ended up buying a new one just because this is one of my favorite games of all time. So I'm like, I was going to give it a nice new one. But to show you the type of issues on this one, you can see the paint. This should come out over here. The paint's all flaking away. 
and we'll kind of pan across it here. And the light kind of glares a bit, but all along the edge here, there's all kinds of places where the paint is flaking away. Same thing at the top. I probably should have put a white, something white underneath there so you could see it better, but you see at the top it's all missing. And when the light shines through and there's any kind of light of any kind, that's when you really notice it. Whereas, of course, this one here is mint. Very nice job. It looks quite, quite accurate. I'm checking the old and the new. I mean, it looks pretty close. I mean, there's some changes over here. And who knows if they're printing errors or what, but there's this weird red stripe on the original, which doesn't kind of make sense there. And this one does not have that, which kind of makes more sense, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, they got little labels there, Williams Electronics Jones 1982. That's on this one here as well. They got the part number over here, which the original has as well. I guess one of the differences is this part here is actually printed right onto the glass, all the instructions, whereas on this one, it actually isn't. It's a piece of cardboard behind this section, and this section is like clear. They just stick it on from the back. But it looks like they got the wording the same. Let me actually double check here. Two can play at once, to mount, to fly. Yeah, it looks all pretty much the same. But overall, real nice. So that one I'm going to end up selling on Clove, and that one is time to go put that one right onto the machine. Well, look what just arrived. The game's uh, stencils for Joust. So uh, these took about roughly a month. I got them from GameStencils.com. Uh, I believe they were 85 bucks. And this comes with different layers. Obviously for each side, you can see this is the red layer, the last layer probably to be put on. I should have two of them, yeah, one for each side. Take a look here. And you can clearly see the ostrich dude. So what I did, I did the usual, um, I put some books, when these come in usually in a tube and they're all kind of curled up, so I put some books on them and let them kind of sit here for a few hours with the books on top and I took the books away, and I, so these are all nice and flat. So ready to go, ready to embark on this stencil adventure. I have never done this before and I'm a little nervous because you kind of get one shot. If you mess it up, that's it, it's done. The stencils are junk and you got to repaint the cabinet. So I'm going to give it one shot. I figured, hey, if I mess up, whatever, I'll repaint it as brown and leave it at that. But I got to give it a try and see what happens. So I'm going to begin by masking joust all the front area just to make sure it doesn't get any you know overspray or anything like that and then apply the first layer of these guy this guy here and see what we got i got the game outside uh all mask you can see front and back there's the back goes around the top as well that's ready to go so i wanted to show something here i'll lower this a little bit this is why i don't really care about things being absolutely perfect because my games are not meant to be trailer queens, to use a car analogy. They're going to be used and moved around, and they will get scuffed here and there. So even just in the process of moving it in and out of the garage, well, I mean, I don't, this comes out or not, I don't know, but there's a little scuff there. And of course, coming through a tight doorway, I clobbered it right here. You know, this is going to happen. I can touch this up, whatever, but that's why I don't worry about it. You just kind of get it done, get it looking nice. Don't worry about it being perfect, especially if it's a game you're going to use. If you're making a museum piece or if you're a business, that's making these things to sell to customers. It's a different story, but for yourself, I wouldn't let the pursuit of perfection stop you from restoring these things. Just go for it. After little errors here and there, who cares? As long as it looks pretty good, you know, and you play the game and, you know, you restore a game from the, save it from the dumpster, that's a win in my book. So this guy's all masked up. Now I'm going to get the stencil out and figure out how to put that on. One challenge is figuring out how to align these things to have it look more or less okay. So... This is my method. Let me raise this guy here. What I decided to do, you just need a consistent reference point. And what I decided to go with is as follows. And I clamped it up top. This is kind of the end. There's like a, I guess you got to show over here first. You can see there's kind of a white part to the stencil and then it kind of goes away. This is like the covering. So I decided to align that at the top. This is the easiest way I could think, and I've curled it over here and clamped into place. So this is aligned with the white border of the stencil, as is... Well, I guess you can see it right here. Let me hold this by hand, maybe that'll be easier. Okay, so you can see this. there's the white and the blue parts. It's a little tricky here, I'm going to try to one-hand it. So I aligned this one, as you can see, to this edge. Curls around there, and it's kind of the same on top. So I've aligned that that whole top edge with the stencil and that seems to make it 
okay everywhere else. So everything goes onto the cabinet. And for example, on the circle here, you know, the gap on the cabinet here in the circle, similar there. So I think this will look okay. And that gives me a reference point for the first stencil layer. I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. I line it at the top the same way and it should be good. Uh, I only have to worry about this for the first one, the first layer, because after that, they leave these little squares here. You leave this little square on when you take off the stencil, and the other two layers have an empty slot here. So that's how you align it. There's one there and there's one over here. That's how you align the subsequent layers. So you just got to get that first layer right. And, you know, I don't know, I think it looks okay. So I'm going to do the same on the first on the other side. Peel off the layers and get this thing all stuck down. One quick thing I want to point out. When you're pulling off the stencil layer here, uh, this is like the backing, and then you're going to stick this on onto the cabinet. You do not want to see any white on this part here. That means part of the actual stencil mask is pulled off. And it'll depend on the mask. Some games it'll be more, they might have little fine details and it's possible those will get pulled off. So just be careful when you're pulling it off if you catch that to kind of stop and make sure the white part remains on here. This part here, the stencil should remain clean. This is just meant to be removed and discarded. A couple little more points to bring up. Um, it'll be much easier to see now. But there's two rectangles you see and they're always marked like this. Uh, and these are little cutouts. When you pull the stencil off when you're done with it, this rectangle needs to stay. That's a reference point for the next stencil layer. You'll line it up with that one, and there's usually a second one right there. So those rectangles have to stay. Uh, a good little pro tip I actually learned from, I think it was the video on the Canadian Arcade YouTube channel that was stenciling a joust. And he said, for this pass, you want to put a piece of tape, you always want to put a piece of tape over this because it's a cutout, a little spray paint can get through on the sides here. So you want to put a piece of tape on this. So that's Thanks to them, to them for that. I wouldn't have even thought of that. Um, the other thing you want to look for is, usually the stencils come off, well, it seems to have come off fine, but I did notice this. I wonder if how visible this will be. Let's kind of zoom in. Right here, you can see, it looks like there's a little cutout that should have come out, and it did not. And I verified on the other side, it is indeed supposed to come out. So I'm going to have to get an X-Acto knife or something like that and peel this one out. That is one thing I'm going to fix. And as far as bubbles go, you know, I didn't put this on super tight because it's not side art. Who cares about bubbles? The only place you really care about bubbles, like I'll show you here. There's a big air bubble right there. Who cares? I'm not painting here. It doesn't bother me. Air bubbles that do bother me would be like that guy right here. Because there's a little gap, I worry about spray paint going underneath there since it's near the paint area. So these ones all, you know, flatten out. Other than that, I don't really concern myself with the bubbles too much. And I've got the side on. I'm going to take the little exacto and take that, little, that part off. But now I still have to mask, of course, the bottom. And around the edges, I'm going to put some masking too. All the areas that shouldn't be painted. And then I'll be right back. The game is completely masked and ready to go. So I did not put this thing on, this uh, stencil, you know, all aggro tight on it. It's kind of loosely on there. I, I'm still worried about it peeling off paint and stuff like that. It's, it's tight enough. I just tried to make sure I got any air bubbles that are along the paint lines so to get rid of those. But again, not super tight. If there's a little bit of overspray, I don't really care. These machines actually came from the factory with overspray anyway. Uh, the guy, Ken, who does my monitors, used to work at Atari back in the day. He told me they would put, you know, often the stencil would be like tin just resting on top and they would get it spray painted. And that never sat perfectly firm against the cabinet, hence why they got overspray. So, I mean, if there's a little bit of overspray here, you know, I don't care. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, so, the plan, I'm a little worried about paint running. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do very light coats of paint. This is the yellow pass, or orange pass, whatever you want to call it, which is this one. I'm probably going to do three coats each side, but super light. Just a very light spray on this side. Go to the other side, a very light spray. Let it sit five minutes, maybe ten tops. Another light spray on each side, and then another one after that, and that'll be it. And I'm going to pull the stencil right off. Because what I don't want, I don't want any paint running, so I'm going to be very light on the paint. I'd rather go multiple coats, but lighter paint each coat. And I don't want the paint adhering to the stencil mask. When I pull it off, that'll cause drama. So that is the pass, that is the, uh, the plan. I mean, three quick passes, and then get that stencil right off. So, well, here we go. First time doing this, let's see what happens. Recording this quickly here, this is just to show how lightly I'm doing each pass. You can clearly see brown poking out through quite a bit, but that's okay. I don't want paint run, I'm just going to do this slowly. 
that's the first pass I'll do a few more if it needs to be three if it needs to be four whatever it takes but I'm gonna let it dry enough for about five ten minutes and keep doing more coats well this is the result definitely not <laughs> as I had hoped for let's get this wide um, as you can see the big problem is all that brown paint just came off with the stencil I'm guessing at this point it's just the wrong paint that I'm using for it and since all the layers I mean that brown the yellow and all the subsequent colors are the same brand of paint I have to assume the next stencil that I put on top is going to yank off a whole bunch of that yellow too so is it worth continuing is the question um, I don't know I mean that brown paint I left it on it had dried on there for how long have I been waiting for this stencil? Probably two weeks. It had two weeks of curing time, so it was not a curing issue. It had definitely cured. It simply did not adhere, and the stencil was able to yank it off. So what do we do? Options are to just finish it anyway and then spend a whole boatload of time touching it all up, or saying, yeah, forget about it, just paint it all brown uh, and leave it at that. I'm not sure which, one, which way I'm going to go, because I don't think I'll be able to get the stenciling done right with the paints I have. I don't know. I mean, it could definitely be touched up. It just will take a lot of time and a lot of patience. Um, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I got time to think about it because I'll let this dry. I mean, there's no point letting it dry for a week or so. It, it's pretty clear that's not going to matter since the brown dried for two weeks and it came right off anyway. So I'll probably just let it dry for a couple of days, uh, then decide whether or not I just say the hell with it, paint it all brown, just leave it at that. Or if I decide to continue with the other stencil layers. So I'll mull it over. i got a few days to think about what to do. Well, the sight of a sanded cabinet should tell the tale is what I decided to do. Now, you know, at the end of the day, I posted on Clav about it to figure out what I did wrong. And I skipped apparently one very important step, which I thought wouldn't have been necessary, but it turns out it is. So I done all the surface prep, you know, sanded it down kind of with 100 grit to make it smooth, to make it rid of the bumps. Then it's 250-ish grit to smooth it out. Cleaned the surface. Painted it, I used a paint and primer that uh, is called Kona Brown Rattle Can. Four coats of that, let it cure for a full two weeks before applying that first, first stencil layer. Apparently that's not enough. What they told me on, on uh, Clove, I showed the paint I used, and they said that paint was perfectly fine. They said I really have to put down a layer of automotive primer, which I did not do. Uh, I figured with the Rattle Can, you know, it's paint and primer in one that would have been enough. No, definitely not enough. So they suggested what I'm going to do, well, the first thing I did, I'm like, maybe I can touch it up. I mean, they kind of told me on Clove, you know, it's going to look terrible if you try to touch it up. But I gave it a shot, just briefly, touched up, you know, there were some areas where all the paint had come off the brown paint. I used some of that brown to touch it up, and they were right, it looked terrible. So they suggested just bite the bullet, start over, and that's what I did. You know, it wasn't, it sucks to kind of undo work that you've done, but that was the smart thing to do. And it didn't take too long. To completely sand this down, both sides took 50 minutes, not that bad. So I'm gonna do exactly how they suggested, which is kind of this, in many ways the same. I sanded it down with 100 grit both sides and then 250 grit to make it smooth. So the surfaces are all completely smooth. I cleaned it all with mineral spirits and a very clean you know, cotton cloth. Cleaned it all off so it's clean and ready to go. I bought automotive primer this time. Uh, you know, let me go even get the can so I'll show you which I'm, what I'm going to use. All right, let's see if we can get this guy in focus. This is the, uh, that is the brand I got. It says Automotive Primer. And this one's a darker color. I mean, they have it in different colors. You can see this one's kind of darker because I'm going to be putting that brown. So I've never used that before, but that's what's going to go on top of this. So we're going to have that two coats of Automotive Primer. I'm going to let it dry for a couple of days. Then I'm going to throw the Kona Brown back on, probably three or four coats of that let that dry for a good period of time. So, yep, it sucks, but hey, it is what it is. You know, I gave it a shot, didn't quite work out, but now I'm gonna get the side looking real nice in brown. So I'm gonna get to that right away. Finally, it has been repainted. Yeah, like I said previously, kind of sucks to have to do that, but you know, after having done it, it's definitely the right decision. Uh, the other one just would not have worked because I didn't do that proper automotive primer step. And it wasn't too long to do this. I mean, it ended up being about 50 minutes to resand, and with the, the paint, you know, I don't know, maybe 70 minutes, something like that. So, you know, say two and a half hours of the whole thing to really get it back to this. Worth doing. Sucks to do it, but it was worth it. Now, in theory, now I have a correct base to work with for future stenciling. Because I've done the appropriate steps. It was all resanded, cleaned with mineral spirits, automotive primer, let it dry, and then multiple coats of red here. Of the brown, I mean, letting it dry. So... It is ready for stenciling. Now, we do not have another stencil kit. It took a month to get the other one, and I'm just not in the mood to wait. So I'm just going to end up leaving this. 
like this. You know, I may re-stencil it in the future. Let me raise this guy, actually. I may re-stencil it in the future, but... Uh, and if I do do that, I'll just record it, and I'll tack on another part to this video. But I'm just not in the mood to do it now. Plus, it would take another month to get it anyway. And I gotta just kind of finish up this machine. I think I want to move it over to my film house, so... This is how it's gonna be. The only things left, then, are... Uh, there is a new marquee coming, it's supposed to arrive this week, it's a simple swap out. And then there's T-molding. Of course, without the T-molding, this thing looks pretty bare. So, the question comes down to what color T-molding. I know it came with black, but I'm a fan of colors. So, I have a couple here. One option is yellow. And I think yellow would go pretty good with this. The primary reasons I'm thinking of not using this is because I have a lot of games that have yellow team molding and yellow matches the player one too much. I kind of want, want to watch match cabinet colors and not player colors. So the yellow looks good, but I think I'm leaning more towards red. Let's get this thing on here. Well, kind of, sort of on there. I think that might look okay. And, you know, it'll kind of match some of the colors up top. I don't know. And the good thing with team molding is you can kind of experiment and try different kinds of colors. And, you know, worst comes to worst, you just change it. I mean, no big deal. I mean, the red will kind of match there a bit. Let's see. I don't know. It's always a tough call. Yellow looks good, too. Red looks good. I don't know. I'm going to pick one of them, and I'm going to install it right now. And we have team molding Red team molding to be exact. I don't think it looks too bad. I know black is the official way to go, but I don't know. I'm just I'm a fan of colors. I think all my games have them. I can actually just spin around over here and you can see yellow on the Super Pack, yellow on the Road Blasters, blue on the Space Duel, orange on the Junior Pack. And here we got red on the Joust. Maybe more of a side view here. Maybe that'll help kind of see the team moving better. Yeah, it helps a little bit. <laughs> with a distinct lack of sight or curses. Yeah, that bugs me, but... Well, it is what it is. I think this is just about done. The only piece I'm really waiting on now is the marquee. This marquee isn't bad, but it's got marks and stains on them. It's kind of stuff, I think, on camera you just you probably can't notice. In person, it really screams at you that it needs to be changed, especially since everything else was changed. I mean, the bezel and the control panel look so much better than the marquee in person. Uh, I guess we got to trust me on that one. Otherwise, the machine is just about done. So that marquee should be here in just a few days. I'll pop that on, which is just a couple of, you know, on the top, there's a little bracket on top. There's a couple of screws you take off and move the bracket, and you just slide the marquee in and out. And that's it, and this machine will be done. So I'll come back once I get the marquee. Well, it looks like this just came in the mail. I got the marquee. So this is the new one. This one's actually glass. The original one is made of plexi. Got this from this old game. It's 59 bucks. They just do top-notch work. Uh, as usual, a lot of this stuff won't quite come out on camera because there's a lot of glare, but this has great color pop. It feels really nice in glass. Uh, definitely feels more premium. The original was Plexi, which was okay. The original one wasn't too bad, but the reason to replace it is it has a few scuffs and flakes, most specifically. I mean, maybe you can't see this on camera, but there's an H, for example, carved in here. So I'm not going to use that one, but I'll sell it off to someone else because it wasn't in too bad condition. And this is the new one, which is really nice. So I'm going to get this put in right now. Just got the marquee on, and the restoration is now officially complete. Here's the complete game. Pretty happy with how it came out. I'll flash up a picture of what it used to look like. You know, initially it had all kinds of problems. Let me take this thing off the tripod and come closer. Of course, some of the initial things were it was painted all black like they usually are, which is kind of a mess. The marquee had some scuffs and scars. This is a new marquee. This top corner was completely smashed. Now it's nice and smooth. The monitor, for the most part, it had some problems, but it was a pretty simple fix. It was just some adjustments, and I had to change that Molex connector to get a good connection. That was an easy fix. The control panel, of course, the overlay was gone on the old one, the nice new one here. I kept the original joystick, so I put new buttons. These are the correct colors, because they had the wrong colors for some of this stuff. Uh, but I did keep the original joysticks. The paint was all done semi-gloss. That's not the recommendation of people on Clove, and I think that was a good call. It seems to be correct to me. Coin lights are working. Coined are everywhere here. It's all taken care of. And inside was all that major work we did. Changing ribbon connectors, changing lots of Molex connectors, all kinds of stuff. But everything has been working totally solid. 
Actually, if it shows the high score table in a bit, you'll see I've been playing it quite a bit. It hasn't had one problem with the machine. And there it is. Another one done. Yep. Of course, there's the glaring omission, the side art. Yeah, I messed that up. You know, you win some, you lose some with these things. This is just how it goes. But for now, I gave it a shot. That side art did not work. I'm going to leave it as is. Um, so it's not 100% complete, but it's good enough for me for the moment. I may actually retry the side art another time, but hey, whatever. For now, it's good. I'm going to call this one complete, call it a wrap, and let's head back up to the office. And with that, the Jouster store is a wrap. You know, you'll win some, you lose some. Uh, it, overall, it came out really, really good, I think. The original one had all kinds of problems with it. Sound wasn't working. The cabinet had that smash in it. You know, things were scratched up. Control panel not there. Uh, you know, screen glitches, all kinds of problems with it. And now it's a very clean game. It works. I've played it a lot. Not one problem with it. So that's the win. You know, the stenciling. Hey, what I always say on these things is, you know, don't let your fear of restoring stop you from trying stuff. I mean, I knew eventually there'd be some task that came up that I couldn't do. Uh, and there we go. Stenciling was one of them. I gave it a shot, at least that first attempt. Didn't go as planned. Uh, and that's okay. You know, like I said, don't let this stuff stop you. Go for it. And, you know, it's worth trying these things anyway. Uh, I'm leaving it as is right now. I mean, that surface, that brown paint on the side of the joust has been prepared correctly this time. You know, it's been sanded underneath. We've got automotive primer. we got a nice layer of brown. So it is ready to try again in the future. Uh, and, you know, truth be told, I did order another stencil set. <laughs> I just, I don't know when I'm going to have the, you know, I guess, courage to try it again. For now, I'm going to leave it as is. I think it's going to be fine. Overall, I guess I'm happy with it. It's a game I like a lot. Probably relocate it over to the film house like most of my games are. Uh, set on free play, so it's all it's good to go. That's it. Uh, and if I ever do come back and do the stenciling, I will film it, and I'll add another part, you know, to this thing uh, as an addendum. Um, I suspect at some point, you know, in a few months, I'll give it another try. I just don't know when, but I will film it if I do give it another try. Whether I fail or I succeed, you know, one way or the other, I'm going to film it. Uh, and that's it. That's what we'll do for the. I guess that'll be a wrap for this one. There's nothing else to do for Joust. This one is complete. On to the next game, I guess, and. Um, Hopefully you guys will watch my next restaurant. Until then, have a good one. Bye-bye.